Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. We are going to harvest some radishes. Our corn is coming up and the radishes are in the way. So, the radishes were planted first and the corn was planted between them. Now we're going to pull the radishes up and the corn will get all the light it needs. There we go. One more here, one more here. And now we have corn ready to grow. Looks just like our garlic over here, except without okay, the curly. Okay, we've got a few radishes that we uh, picked from the garden earlier, and then we've got the ones that I picked today. Some of them look pretty bad today because they, uh, they're starting to go to seed. So I'm gonna cut these all up and then put them in a, a pot. Got all the greens over there. Put them in a pot to uh, boil. I am going to boil the radishes. And while they're boiling, I'm gonna take this bag and put it out into the compost the radishes bin. radishes have been boiling for quite a while. I have shut it off, let it cool, testing for tenderness. Yeah, a couple spots are still a little bit tough, but I think it'll be a use a blender like we normally do. I'm going to take a half a cup of coconut milk. Maybe that'll help blend those. And I'm going to put uh, one or two eggs in there as well. I will put a couple eggs in there. give us a little bit more liquid so maybe we can blend that now I would like to put sugar in there but I have said I'm going to make sugar free so we're going to take some pre-sweetened Kool-Aid. You're going to pour it right in there. All right, we're going to try it. Looks like strawberry mousse. I'm going to turn in the, the shell as usual. Lean it in. I am going to put it on the second shelf of the oven and start it on bake 350 degrees. Timer 50 minutes. And there it is. Today is the first day of June. I have replanted. 
I think peanuts. I may have just planted them too deep. I uh, have cho I've picked as many snap peas as I can reach. I've replanted some peanuts here as well. And some of them have actually come up here. There's a peanut there that's coming up. Another one, another one, another one. Um, not a lot of growth to them yet, but the, they've pushed the, the seed right up through. Same thing over here. One here, one here. Maybe I just planted those other ones too deep. Kohlrabi. We can see we've got some uh, bulbs starting to grow there. Especially one over here. We get plenty of sun. Nice one. And uh, they're all starting to grow pretty well. So those, I'll be weeding them out, or thinning them out, as soon as they get big enough to eat. The fennel, looking really good. The giant beets, they're not as fast growing as the red beets. I thinned out the red beets uh, yesterday, day before, and I've uh, made some pickled beets out of the first crop. And I found a few peas over in there. I, I planted corn across there yesterday and a few peanuts in there today. So the beets, now that they're thinned and weeded, they should grow much quicker and much bigger and they'll be ready to harvest. I haven't, uh, recorded at the garden for a while and I'm going to show you what we've been doing. Our greenhouse, I've finally started to use it. We've got corn growing here and here and here and I need to water it. And I've got Rutabagas trying to start in this tray here. We've got rutabagas here because I've tried planting some out in the garden and they haven't started. And I don't understand why. Out in the garden and to fertilize, we've got our nitrogen liquid nitrogen fertilizer over here commonly called liquid gold or urea you want to mix it 10 to 1 with water one of these full of urea otherwise known as urine to a bucket that holds about a dozen of these. If you don't water it down, you can use it to kill plants. Or you can use it to fertilize the uh, compost pile. While we're here, I'm going to show you a few tricks. We had lots of beets here. We have pulled the big ones out to thin them out to give these room to grow. And I also had peas growing over here and they weren't doing too good. And I didn't want to waste this area. So I have planted corn. It's about four to six inches away from the wall. And another row of corn right between where the peas and the beets were. In fact, these peas are pretty much done now. 
I could pull them out. This one is done, that's for sure. And I don't see any flowers on either of these two. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. And I'm going to pull these weeds out as well. Try not to disturb our corn too much though. Also got some peanuts down in here. Right next to the corn. And peanut there, there, there. Now, this one does have a few flowers on it. And this one got a couple flowers on it. We're going to be getting a little bit of peas on it, but not worthwhile. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those off too. Let the corn get the sun that it deserves. Didn't pull them up by the roots because I didn't want to disturb the roots of the other stuff. Got a few weeds in there, but mostly it's corn and peanuts and our mulch. This weed and this weed and this weed I can pull up by the roots. Okay. To fertilize, we can just dump our mixture of fertilizer and water right onto the ground. But the best thing to do is uh, make some holes around our plants like this. So that the urea can get way down inside. Because we want fertilizer and the water to get way down there. And I'm going to put a good layer of water on there that's going to soak right in. These definitely need watering too. Now I'll do the same thing on the kohlrabi. Make like a star pattern around each plant. Make room for the water to get all the way deep into the dirt around each plant. Now when these beets are finally big enough and I harvest them, I'm going to be planting that corn that I've got started in the greenhouse right here in this area. All these beets are and where the kohlrabi is. So this whole area and this whole area, of course the kohlrabi, we're not going to pull up all at once, but all right, I don't need to have it sprinkle. I'm just going to uh, use it like a hose and just saturate this area.
So there's a good size puddle around each plant. And I fill up each of those cracks that I made. Yeah, I've only done that many plants with one whole bucket. This is the weed. I'm going to just finish this up over here. Put lots of fertilizer water. You could also use compost tea, which is basically you dig into the compost pile wherever you've got some good compost. And usually the compost is wet and sticky and and we want to Well, in the middle of those piles you'll find some, but instead of getting it out and having it in chunks and turning it into the soil by hand, you can uh, mix it up with the, oops, I didn't make any holes for that beet. Um, where's my shovel? There it is. So the compost tea you can use A bucket and uh, just put some compost into the bottom of the bucket and then fill it with water and then uh, mix it up like soup. This is going to give a good dose of fertilizer to this area. Because these beets are just ready to grow big and then be harvested. And during the time of their maximum growth, that's when they need the fertilizer. fertilizing it's always good to follow up with a good heavy dose of water to be able to wash that fertilizer right down into the soil and to uh, wash off the leaves of the plants I don't think I've discussed yet what I've done here, I had peas in the first row, and before the peas were even done, I had planted corn on either side of it. You can see corn here and here. There's also some corn in the greenhouse that's going to be put in uh, this area where the beets are, and this area where the kohlrabi is. And eventually when those peas get out, I might, uh, if I still have some corn left over, put some right where that is as well. The beets and the fennel on the other side of that, I think I'll just keep the fennel growing for sure because that's a long crop. And since the beets that are over there are the giant yellow beets, they apparently take a long time to grow because they're not getting as big as the red beets are yet. Well, let's get an update on the strawberries. We have been placing the runners 
in holes on the uh, plastic mulch so that they will root. There's one right there that's outside. Notice here the pots are not staying together so the water's not soaking in the way it should. So they're probably not rooting the way they should. I'm trying to make at least 12 plants. Not a lot of strawberries out here this year, but it's because the plants are establishing. Next year there should be all kinds of strawberries. So there's our strawberry patch. Started off with 20 little plants. Smaller than the ones I'm getting in the pots now. Squash and watermelon in the pits out here. Not doing as fast as the squash that shallows ago, but it's not fast growing because I've got some carnival squash and watermelons. Potatoes in the back are doing good. Corn I originally planted between the uh, radishes is a foot and a half tall. The other corn is coming up between the garlic. Garlic tops have already been harvested. Strawberries the, uh, are doing good. Not getting any strawberries, but we're getting plenty of plants. All right, here's our parsnip patch that we planted about two months ago. It is now June 18th and it might have been the first of May when we planted it and uh, these ones with the flowers on it are last year's crop and uh, these here are the ones that came up from the seeds we had one two three four five six rows planted every four inches and obviously they didn't all come up and parsnip seeds are only good for about a year so one season is all you get. So if you try to save seeds to the following year, forget it, they're no good. I've got about five seeds left. I've uh, already planted in a lot of the spaces that were uh, bare. And uh, basically what I did is just loosened up the soil with my fingers. I'll plant some more, um, oh gee, how about right here? Not loosen the soil like this. It is loose underneath, there's just a little bit of a crust on top. So I went like that, and then just one seed at a time, push them down so they're just below the surface. Like that. And then just cover them up with a little bit of dirt. Hit them with the back of my hands just to smooth it out. And you can see all the areas that I have already done that with. And of course I thoroughly weeded everything so that the uh, weeds are gone. I've got one between each of those two plants there or four in this section here a whole row right here now I uh, this patch was fairly dry last night so I soaked it with water I put probably half inch to an inch deep of water on the whole patch to prepare for this now there's one that's not quite under the ground covered up with some dirt there it is. The next thing we're going to do is harvest the garlic. I just researched the internet this morning and it said when the leaves start to turn brown it's basically time to harvest. And as you can see our garlic leaves are well browned. Now they say to dig them and not to try to just pull them from the top. So if we tried to pull this 
by grabbing a hold of it right here and pulling it, we would break that stem. But I know that the garlic is down there about three inches. So I'm gonna reach in with my fingers. And without disturbing that corn plant, pull it up like that. And uh, of course this row that's between the rows of uh, corn, it wouldn't be a problem, but this big one here is fairly close to that corn plant. So what I do is I get under here with my finger and then pull up on it. I'm not going to rinse these off with water, but I'm going to braid them together and hang them up to dry so that they can... Uh, this is garlic. So they could dry enough to... Ah! Oh, yeah, that's a big one. I think the first is where you have to tighten up a little bit. And then... Tie the first three in a knot. Next one. The trick is... You're going to keep folding it to the middle. Correct. And, then... and every time you get ready to fold one, you got to put another another one down. Yeah, there's a way to do it. You uh, fold it over the middle one first and then put your garlic clove on top and add it to the one that you just folded over. Yeah, this is much better. of garlic and now we can hang that up in our shed and let it dry there that should make this shed smell nice I think it's about time I share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ According to the Bible in Romans 3.23, all of us are sinners, and we do not measure up to God's perfection. Romans 6.23 says, The penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, Jesus came to earth as a man to pay the price for the sins of mankind. Romans 10.13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from the penalty of eternal death. The payment Jesus made for our sins is only available to those who believe and trust in his fulfillment of God's promise to save the world from their sins. If you want to take part of the resurrection of life, you must believe and accept the gift of eternal life that Jesus has provided. Or you could reject the gift and take part in the resurrection of damnation unto eternal death. God loves you and has provided a means of eternal life if you will believe and accept the gift. I have accepted and my life has been changed as the Bible tells us it would. I'd like you to consider joining me and all of God's disciples in eternal life. If you want more information, you can email me at crunchtime at roadrunner.com. Until next week, God bless you and yours. And we'll see you again on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.